Hi guys, my name is Chelsea Adler and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about all things actuaries and insurance. If you didn't know, actuaries have to take a series of exams to become fully licensed, but the learning doesn't stop there. Because the world changes so quickly, the actual profession does as well. To do our best work, actuaries have to be constantly learning new skills and stay up to speed on the latest and greatest techniques for doing our job. And in order to do that, actuaries accumulate continuing education hours every year. The exact number of hours that you need varies based on the society that you get your credentials through, as well as the specifics of your role. But in general, the number of hours you're going to need to get for continuing education is far less than what you would have been putting in to study for the actuarial exams. And there's actually a lot of flexibility in how you can get these continuing education hours. In this series, I'm going to be sharing recaps of webinars, podcasts, publications, anything that I check out for my continuing education that I think is particularly interesting and would benefit others to check out as well. I'll post links down below to each of the resources if you want to check it out in more detail. In this video, I'm going to be sharing about an article from the November and December 2021 Contingencies magazine, which is a publication produced by the American Academy of Actuaries. The article I wanted to highlight is called The Great Hunt, A Brief History of Automobile Rating Variables. And you can find this starting on page 13 of the magazine. Now, really the focus of this article is on what factors are used to price car insurance because they are helpful in predicting future loss. As someone who currently works in auto pricing, this was a really interesting read for me and super helpful in my job to kind of understand the background and history of how we got to where we are today. It starts by giving us a view of how the first auto rating plans were constructed. And at the time, they were super simple. They really only had two variables that premium varied by. And those at the time were territory or geographic location, as well as the price of the car. Then the article kind of walks through how over time, the variables that were being used to price auto insurance changed because they were once shown to be predictive of future loss and then at other times were not. It kind of provides the context behind why some variables were more useful during some time periods and, and weren't as useful during others. The article ends by stating that the search for new and better rating variables continues, which is certainly true from my perspective. We are always iterating on our processes, looking for that new piece of information that's just gonna help us to price future risk better than our competitors. But what remains true throughout all of history is that there are certain characteristics you really need to be true of the rating variables you select for your rating plan. And those are that they are objective, verifiable, and easy to administer. Now, if you've taken exam five, that should sound familiar because that comes straight from actuarial standard of practice number 12 on risk classification. Another thing that I thought was really interesting in this article is that it was clear very early on in history that one of the most important risk characteristics or piece of information that will help us predict future loss is the driver of the vehicle. And I want to read this quote by Kirkpatrick. As early as 1922, actuary A.L. Kirkpatrick recognized the driver is, quote, by far the greatest hazard to be considered an automobile underwriting. Unfortunately, there has been no satisfactory solution presented for getting the information which will enable the underwriter to determine which drivers are good risks and which are bad. This is really cool to look back on because we've known throughout all of history that the individual driving the vehicle is a major indicator of risk, and yet we haven't always had great ways to get at that information. And now with telematics, which will allow us to know how people drive their vehicles, we can actually get at that detailed information that we've always known was really valuable. Um, so it's just really exciting to be a part of a company who is leveraging that type of information to not only price more accurately, but also to re reduce the reliance on variables that people don't have control over, which ultimately makes the rating plan and the insurance more fair overall. 
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and comment below. This will increase the chances that other people will find this video and benefit from it too. Also, if you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on new videos. I love connecting with you guys, so if you have any ideas about what content you would like to see or topics you'd like me to cover, please let me know. Put it in the comments below, send me an email, message me on Instagram. I would love to hear your ideas. Thank you so much for watching.